Welcome to this month's Member to Member Connection. Uh, I'm Mick Schwadler, this year's ASHRAE President, and today we're going to talk about a career advancement. To help us with that, we have two panelists. Uh, the first is Heather Shopline. She's a University of Mechanical and Engineering Contractors, and she's a pre-construction manager. And we also have with us uh, presidential member Tim Wentz. He's Emeritus Professor of Construction Management at the University of Nebraska. Heather and Tim, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having thanks for us. Having, yeah, thank you. This is going to be a great conversation. Uh, Heather, the first question is going to come to you. Uh, could you remember back to your first ASHRAE experience and uh, share some of that with us? Sure. Well, so I think my first ASHRAE experience was probably a chapter meeting. Um, I think someone told me about it and like, hey, you should come to this. So I don't really remember that one specifically, but I think after like two or three, I heard in one of those chapter meetings about this Yay Leadership Weekend that they were hosting, I think for the first time actually in 2008, goodness, I feel old now. But um, so I decided to go to that. My company sponsored it because it focused on soft skills also. And I was relatively new to the industry and learning more about ASHRAE. And that was by far the best experience. And I know like the joke is you drank the Kool-Aid with ASHRAE. That really like, it gave me a good, like strong, like passion for ASHRAE. You know, it not just the technical skills, but the soft skills and just how it benefits everyone. So that was probably the first thing I really remember about ASHRAE and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. It definitely kept me going. Fantastic. So Heather, uh, neither Tim nor I are yay, which is a young engineer in oh, ASHRAE. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, Tim, if we can go to you now, uh, in your presidential address, you talked about your dad telling you to be in the room. Yeah. Can you think back to the first time you went into the room and what that was like? Absolutely. I mean, it's burned into my mind. I went to Omaha, as my dad requested, went to the Nebraska chapter meeting, which was held in a in an old Italian steakhouse. And uh, boy, I remember walking in the room and of course I was just out of college and I just, I just felt, you know, like the youngest person there. And I, when I walked in, I thought, geez, what am I doing here? I mean, all these guys and I, I knew that these were the movers and shakers in our industry. And before any time at all, one of them walked over and said, who are you? And I told him who I was. and. He said, come with me, we're, we're going to get you uh, uh, all signed up. And uh, boy, they got me uh, signed up. And, and that gentleman uh, kind of took me under his wing. And, and that, to me, is one of the things that ASHRAE can, can provide you that you just can't find anywhere else. Is that network, those mentors like that gentleman who called me, by the way, two weeks ago. Uh, he's 91, and, and he's still a part of my network. So... Those, those lifelong friendships, both professional and personal, are absolutely amazing. Uh, so, so, Tim, you, you attended your first meeting. When was the first time you got involved in something? Yeah, that, that's a great question. It was a while. I, I'll be the first to admit, I kind of sat at the back of the room, you know, for, oh, uh, seven, eight, nine years. And somebody came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said, gee, you're a young person. You should be on student activities. <laughs> and that was my first job in ASHRAE. It was, it was, and I, I was just on the committee. I wasn't a chair or vice chair or anything. And started there and enjoyed it and worked my way up from, you know, became the chair of student activities. And then pretty soon they tapped me on the shoulder and said, you really ought to be on the board of governors. <laughs> and so and there it went. Just like that. Uh, uh, fantastic. So Heather, after the Yay Leadership Weekend, um, did it happen right then or where did oh, you start getting volunteered? Yeah, so I think it was maybe the next meeting or two after um, Devin Avalon, who's our current DRC, which is uh, Director of Regional <laughs> Chair. Um, he actually was like, hey, I need some help with the newsletter you know, would you be willing to help me? And I had just come off this high of the leadership weekend and, you know, wanting to get more involved and not knowing how. And it was just simple as him asking, hey, would you be willing to help me with this? And then I think I became the newsletter website person the following year and then did that for a couple of years, went on the board, then became chapter president, and then it's gone on for 
different regional stuff and society. But um, that was my first position and it was almost immediately after that weekend and I couldn't be happier that it did happen that quick and that he took the effort just to ask. Well, that, that, that's kind of the common thread in this conversation, isn't it? You know, somebody taps you on the shoulder and said, hey, can you help me with the newsletter? And, and oftentimes, you know, that's the trigger to get somebody really involved. And we end up getting things back. So, so Heather, can, can you share with us, you got things back personally. What kind of things did you bring, bring back to your job and your employer? So there's so much. I mean, obviously the technical skills are, and the continuing education is so valuable to my employer as a pre-construction manager. I have to keep up to date with what the design engineers are doing and what's going on in the world, and but also with the um, construction aspect. So I definitely need that because there's so many new technologies all the time. And then I've definitely taken advantage of a lot of the ALI courses, um, ASHRAE Learning Institute. Um, yay, the young engineers in ASHRAE. We also, when I was on that committee, we did some technical weekends where we actually did like ALI courses geared to certain things. And so my employer could really see that benefit coming back in my work. And then in addition, the soft skills, the leadership, how to run a meeting. I know we've all probably sat in meetings where they're very ineffective. And I feel that all the meetings at ASHRAE, especially with the Roberts Rules of Order and how effective in the meeting minutes and keeping to the agenda, um, that has been invaluable just on a day-to-day -day life for my employer. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with you. So Tim, I, I've had the opportunity to see you chair meetings. So obviously I know you do that very well. What kind of other things did you bring back to your uh, position at the university? Well, I, I think really the big thing was, uh, uh, as Heather said, the technical aspect of it. I, I have a mechanical engineering degree. And I think Nebraska did a, a, a good job, but it was very theoretical, you know? So I, I get out in the industry and I really don't know how things work. <laughs> and, and here's this network of people that are willing and able to say, okay, you know, you know the theory, here's how this really works. And it, it really made me much better contractor and made me a much better engineer and a much better uh, professor as well. But as Heather said, uh, the, the hidden jewel of ASHRAE is all that leadership training you get. And, and you, it's almost like osmosis. I mean, you start chairing a meeting here or you do a newsletter there and pretty soon, you, you know, you've got a pretty impressive set of, of, of soft skills. And I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I, I graduated uh, university with a very, a very small set of, of soft skills. And so that was probably the biggest impact uh, for me, those, those two items. Mick, if I can add yeah, please. Thing, the other, so I do with my position is pre-construction, a little bit of business development also, and the relationship building and the skills and like mm -hmm. the lifelong friends and the open communication and the trust. And a lot of those soft skills, I also learned through ASHRAE. Like I can call up people from back east from in London and hey, what's going on there? What, you know, what's the difference? Can I get help on this? How are you guys handling this in your area versus our area? And I have a lot of friends in the industry also that now called like from, you know, Missouri and stuff like that. Hey, what is going on? How would you do this? And I think so it helps both on the technical side, but also it made me a lot more comfortable and getting out and talking to people and making new acquaintances and building those relationships. Total, totally agree. Thanks for sharing, Heather. Okay, now we're talking about career advancement and sometimes people advance their careers by going to a different employer. Um, Heather, can you share, uh, some, some employers are concerned about having their employees get poached. Heather, what do you think about that? <laughs> Well, so um, I will say that it's definitely a concern of chapters. You know, we hear it at every um, chapter regional conference is that that's the number one reason why employers or engineers aren't sending their younger members to meetings. 
um, to be honest with you, I was poached at one point in a meeting and it really made me under, at the time I wasn't really supported by my employer. I knew the benefits of ASHRAE and why I should be in the room as Tim likes to say, and what I would get out of it. And so I did it on my own dime. I'd have to take time off of work to go to a meeting. I pay all my own dues, everything like that. It's something I will continue to do no matter where I end up. It's, I see the value in ASHRAE. Um, but I was poached by someone and it definitely made my employer very upset. Um, I ended up going back to my employer because I wasn't happy with that other one. But what I have learned to tell um, people that have those similar concerns is if you provide the support for your people and uh, you keep them happy, if your employee is happy, like happy wife, happy life, uh, a happy employee is a continuing employee. And by supporting them going to that and supporting them having the continuous education and building those relationships, it has just improved. And especially I'm in San Diego, we're a very tight knit community. People move around a lot. So you end up finding out who those people are and you just warn your person, hey, this person is probably gonna come up and try to get you. And if you do come talk to me first, like if you feel like you want to do it, as long as you have that open dialogue and your employee feels that way, I don't think there's any concern there. I just didn't feel I had it at the time. And I was very green, very, very young when that happened. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any poaching going on at the university? Oh, sure. I, I, I mean, I hear the, the concern all the time and I understand the concern, but, uh, I, I don't think the, the concern is real. That's, that's my position. Yeah. Uh, you know, if somebody is inclined to be receptive to a poach, well, there's some, there's some other issue going on in that firm, okay? Yeah. Between that so, employee yeah. and that employer. And it has nothing to do with ASHRAE. It has nothing to do with them being in the room. That's a relationship uh, at, at the employer's level that, that really needs somebody's attention. And, and from a personal standpoint, I'll say the people in our group, the group that I work in, who are the most involved in ASHRAE have 15 years all with the same company, yeah. 25 years all with the same company. I'm working on the 40th. So Heather, I really like your happy employee is a loyal employee. And it's really excellent. Okay. Okay, let's move on from employers and career advancement and talk a little bit about the families. A serial volunteers sometimes get too involved. Um, what kind of support does the family give you? Tim, let, let's start with you this time because I know that Marcia has expended a lot of a lot, a, a lot of heart with an Ashley. Can, can you share some of that, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh but I, I, I think that's a, a, a two-way two, two way process there. Uh, she knew how much ASHRAE meant to me, both professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, she developed some really strong friendships from people all over the world that she wouldn't otherwise get to know. And, and so, you know, we looked at it as, as a team. Okay, we're here as a team. And and we're, we're going to uh, use this opportunity to make both of us stronger. And that's the approach we took and it, and it worked for us. It, you know, and as you said, we're, I'm a serial uh, ASHRAE member. And so, you know, uh, we took some of our vacation time and spent them at ASHRAE conferences. I mean, that's, that's what we did, but we also tried to make sure there was, there was family time there too. And, and there was a good balance and that uh, we viewed it as a team and we were both gonna get better as a team. Thanks for sharing. Heather, how about you and David? Um, so David is very, very supportive and I try to definitely balance when I'm doing things. You know, they talk about home life balance or, you know, work life balance. Um, so, you know, I try to wait. I have a one and a half year old Cohen. I try to wait till after he goes to bed if I have to do some additional things because I wanna focus on him. But David, I mean, he, is always there for me. He'll go with the con like go with me to conferences, and I can't wait to bring Cohen to them. With COVID, unfortunately, he hasn't got to meet everyone. But David and I, we've developed so many close friendships, also. And now, um, 
there's kind of a joke that there's an ASHRAE baby boom, kind of. There's in our region specifically, um, I think we had six babies born within six months of each other. So it is kind of crazy, but it's, I look forward to the children also growing up together and getting to know each other and that support that we have for each other. Um, it definitely makes it a lot easier and it makes me more positive and um, more willing to volunteer and take on things knowing that I have him in my corner. Thanks so much for sharing. Okay, so, so let's get to the second to last question. Um, how did Ashrae specifically help your career? Heather, you wanna go first? Oh, how is it not? <laughs> so um, that it's such, it's in everything we do. And I think, especially the handbooks, the education, um, I've done both the grassroots and the technical committee side and the knowledge base and the networking. I mean, there's, it's just kind of infinite how much it's given me and how it's helped me progress, you know, and how I kind of mentioned earlier, the people that you meet and those relationships you build and how I can call someone. If I have a, a let's say a museum project that I don't know really where to start because I haven't personally done one before. I know who in ASHRAE to call and get advice. I know where in the ASHRAE handbook to go. I know that there's a distinguished lecturer I could reach out to. You know, like those things have helped so much. And it's not anything you can like tack to like, oh, this point or that point. It's all of it holistically has just made me a better employee and helped me grow so much quicker in the industry. Tim, your turn. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit different because I had a, a midlife career change. Uh, my wife sometimes refers to it as the midlife career crisis, <laughs> but I, I moved from contracting to academia, which was a stark change. And I, I'm, I am absolutely convinced that I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have tried to make that big a career change had I not been empowered with the, the skill sets and the confidence and and the network that I had in ASHRAE. Because when I, I moved into academia, academia I, I felt confident that I could stand in front of the class and, and show them how and why these things really work. And I had the skill sets I thought to run a classroom and to speak in front of the classroom. And boy, I, I couldn't have done that without ASHRAE. No, it's, there's just no way. Thank, thanks so much for sharing. Uh, before we close, Tim, are there any last thoughts you'd like to share with our audience today? Yeah, you know, it, clearly ASHRAE has made a huge difference in my life. It made a difference in, in my career as a contractor, made a huge difference in my career as, a, as an engineer, and it's made a huge difference in my life as, a, as an educator. And, and so that kind of gives you an idea of how broadly ASHRAE can, can impact your career and, and make it possible for your career to, to change and evolve and grow. And so I, I would encourage everybody, not just to join ASHRAE, but become active in ASHRAE. Thanks. Heather, you get the last word before we close. Well, I think Tim kind of hit the nail right on the head. I would say, you know, no matter what you're looking to get out of ASHRAE, there's something for you. If you want the relationships, that's definitely something you can get. I mean, I had 10 people from ASHRAE at my wedding, you know, like there's a lot of things like that. You definitely can build those relationships. If you want the technical side, there's that, there's the technical committees, there's research, there's the different standards committees. You have so many options there um, in addition to the conferences. So no matter what you want and how much time you want to invest, ASHRAE has something to give you back. And it definitely will help you in whichever road you're trying to go down, whether you're a contractor, a sales engineer, an engineer, a construction man, it really doesn't matter. ASHRAE will help. Wow. Thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Uh, Heather and Tim, thanks for the time. And our audience, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again next month at the Member to Member Connection.